This episode of the Memory Palace is brought to you by Article. We are big fans of Article here at the Memory Palace. This room of the palace, um, the ballroom where I'm sitting right now, um, it's palatial, trust me, um, is lit beautifully uh, by a legit beautiful lamp from Article. This stuff is of extraordinarily high quality. Um, it is truly lovely furniture that's influenced by you know mid-century modern and Scandinavian styles. Um, I have a feeling you're really going to like it. If you've never checked it out before, you know, summer and warmer weather is right around the corner here in the Northern Hemisphere. And they really have fantastic outdoor furniture. It's totally worth checking out. Go to article.com and take a look. The stuff looks great and it is made with all these outdoor friendly materials like teak and acacia wood and granite and galvanized steel and rattan. And it comes to you with a flat delivery fee of $49, regardless of what you're buying and how big the order is. So go to www.article.com slash memory palace and get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. That is www.article.com slash memory palace. Go check it out. I'm excited to tell you guys about a new sponsor that solves the underlying problem of furniture shopping, which is you look at the stuff online and you have no idea whether it's going to actually work in your room. Well, say hello to Modsy. With Modsy, you can see new furniture in a 3D model of your actual room and redecorate it until you get your room just right. You're going to send Modsy a few photos of the room, going to answer a short online style quiz, and that's it. Then you have this sort of 3D model of your room, and then you can take furniture that they have from all these great partners, like Crate and Barrel and West Elm, and spin them around, and you can see exactly how they're going to look in your space. And there's no more, you know, crossing your fingers and just hoping it's going to fit, or crossing your fingers and just hoping that the colors aren't going to clash. You can swap stuff out until you find just the right thing you're looking for. So head over to modsy.com slash memory and you can get yourself a 20% discount on your first room. That's M-O-D-S-Y dot com slash memory. This is the Memory Palace. I'm Nate DeMeo. We've forgotten James Powell and how he was there that day in 1964 while the kids were hanging out on the stoop on East 76th Street up the block from Wagner Junior High just kicking it after a day at summer school, like they always did. And how the man, the white man who managed the building, fixing radiators, unclogging drains, snapped that day and took a hose and sprayed the black and Puerto Rican kids on the stoop, called them dirty n****ers, said he'd wash them clean. And how the kids didn't take it, started throwing trash can lids in the bottles of soda they'd been sitting drinking on the stoop just a minute before, back when they were just kicking it after school. And how James Powell, African-American, 15 years old, was walking by with a couple of buddies and saw it all. And how they chased the man into the vestibule of the building after he'd retreated out of the range of the bottles and the trash can lids. And the boys yelled at him for a couple minutes and then left. And as James stepped back out onto the stoop, that summer smell of sudden water on hot bricks still hanging in the July air, he was laughing. A teenager puffed up after shouting down a grown man. He took a step and was shot three times by an off-duty lieutenant with the NYPD, a white cop who had been at a fix-it shop next door getting his radio repaired when he'd heard the shouting and the bottles and the trash can lids. We've forgotten James Powell's mother, Annie, and how she threw herself in the coffin at the funeral home, just like they do in the movies, because that's how it really feels sometimes and her son had just been killed one day after school. The city caught fire, six nights of riots in Harlem, Bed-Stuy. We've forgotten James Powell. We've forgotten Odessa Bradford, an African-American woman dragged out of her broke-down car by some Philly police later that same summer, but people in Philadelphia remember the riots that ensued. We've forgotten Perfecto Bondolan, a lettuce picker from the Philippines who met a girl named Esther Schmick and fell in love. The cops arrested them. They didn't believe him. Assumed he'd kidnapped her until the girl's mother said he was a nice boy, said they were engaged. The cops let him go, but the mob came anyway, and Watsonville, California rioted for six days. We've forgotten Eugene Williams, swimming in the ocean one day in the segregated side of the beach in Chicago, one of the bathers who was hit by rocks thrown by a white man on the sand, but the only one who drowned afterward. 
We remember the riots of 1919. We've forgotten Robert Bandy, an African-American soldier who asked some policemen why they were arresting a woman in the lobby of the Braddock Hotel in Harlem one night in 1943, and they shot him, and the city burned. We remember the fire, but we forget the match. We've forgotten James Powell.